Hi, it's me, Brady. I'm on the floor of my parents' house in Vermont. So, you know, we're making do with what we got. Speaking of which, this was hanging on the wall. I want to show it to you guys. It's kind of cool. I took this when I was like 11 years old in Vermont here with a little tripod and you see some little motion blur and stuff like that. I think it's kind of cool. So there's our show and tell for the day. Anywho, my name's Brady. Welcome, welcome back. I've missed you guys. I hope you are doing fantastic. I want to talk about, well, you guessed it, lighting. More particularly, the scene that I threw together, I threw it together really fast. So I was gaffing on this project here, and this was just a little corporate shoot, but we had this shot that I was really happy with, and I wanted to talk about it and break it down. And now we didn't have a lot of time to get this daylight interior shot. We had maybe like 10 minutes, and they were like, this is what we want, this is where we're shooting it. Let's figure it out. There's a handful of lights, but we kind of threw them in and kind of followed a basic structure to get to that. And I kind of just want to talk about it and break it down for us today. That's it. So fun. So we've got this kind of like afternoon daylight interior and you see that it's pretty high key. It's on the higher key side of things. Uh, corporate, a little bit brighter. We wanted it more clean white. So we wanted a lot of exposure in here. So what we're looking at is we've got our talent sitting here on the couch and we've just kind of got this very wide interior showing the entire house. So we wanted to, even though it's cloudy out, we wanted to bring in the level and make it bright and make it kind of like sunnier feel. So that's kind of what was told to me as the gaffer on this. And I was like, all right, well, what am I gonna do? We've got daylight, we've got a lot of like a wide shot. What are our options? So I wanna talk about the first light that I put into play here, which actually wasn't the key light, contrary to common routine. But the first light was a 1200D, an Aperture 1200D. And what purpose is this serving? This was sunlight coming in from the outside because it was gloomy. Otherwise, if it was sunny out, we could maybe track the sun, but we had no sun to work with. So I knew a 1200 would be bright enough for after we exposed for the outdoors through the windows. And I wanted to bring this light in. I knew, I was like, let's just bring a slash of light across the couch because in my head, like bright sunlight on the couch is like nice exposure. It's gonna look really nice and happy and bright. So I was like, let's throw this sunlight across the couch, but I didn't want it to cast on the talent's face. I still want her to look very nice. So I used, there was a ledge that was outside, like an overhang ledge kind of thing. And I brought the 1200 up just to the point where that harsh shadow line fell kind of right on her chest, often heard of as a soft hob technique. So I just used that just to create a slash of light. So pretty much everything from her torso down and across the couch and across that little pooly area of the room was gonna get this beautiful, nice sunlight. But if we just leave it at that, we're just gonna have like kind of eh, soft ambience across her face and her face is very important. We want it to look good. So I added one other light and this behind this, it was an Aperture Nova 300C. That's what we had there. And I put in front of it, just like a four by four, I think it was like 252 diffusion, just let's call it a silk just basic diffusion and it was a four by frame set up there just out of frame because since it's a wide frame, I wanted to get it as close as we could to make it a big soft source, but it obviously wasn't insanely close. So I took the Aperture Nova and I put that matched to daylight as well. That was a 5,600 Kelvin light fixture as well. And I put that behind um, that four by four, just kind of coming from the window. It was a little bit pushed around the front of her so you can get a little bit more wrap of light coming in across her face, giving us a nice little Rembrandt. But it really brought up the level, the overall softness and ambience of the entire scene as well as on her face. So it blended really nice with that hard quality of light coming across her and the soft quality of light coming across her face in the couch. So moving forward, let's talk about her and then we'll light the scene because we're gonna light faces and spaces, we'll get to that. On her shadow side, on her other side over frame left shoulder, it was just a dark house. There were no windows bringing light in. So I was like, all right, let's just bring in a little bit edge light, just a little, you know, kiss of something here. And for this, we use the Amaran Pixel Tubes, the PT4C, I believe is what they're called. And I had this to a daylight as well. And I set this vertical, just kind of hanging out of frame. So if you could see, you know, that frame line, we brought it in and then brought it back out just so we could get as far back of an edge light as possible. But that was motivating just like a little edge across her neck, her hair, her shoulder, just acting as if there's daylight spilling throughout the house making it a little bit more brighter, a little bit more high key. So that covers all of her, all of the talents. We've got the key light, the hard light through the window, and then this rim light. But moving back into the scene, we can see the entire house back there. And I wanted to keep the continuity of this sideways sunlight coming in. So you can see on the backsplash, like the kitchen backsplash, you see some sunlight trickling in on the backsplash and the, the bar and all of that. So we put an aperture 600C out there because it's all we had. I would have loved the second 1200 for this, but it's all we had on set. 
So it was a 600C set to a daylight color temperature, another 5600 Kelvin. It was just a reflector dish right outside the window. We had it kind of hidden behind one of the pillars in the windows. And we just shine this in so it kind of strategically cast it on the backsplash and the island, bringing in like another ray of sunlight, essentially. Just to bring up more exposure throughout the entire scene because it would feel weird if there was sun on the talent and not sun coming in the same window in the back. And then also we had another shot that we were keeping continuity with. Uh, you see under the bar, we just had a little tungsten glow, just a glow of like orange, just a little like a, a practical light or like a, like a household light. And that, that was raking up across this wooden backsplash on the bar, like kind of where your legs go. And this was an Amaran P T4C as well, one of those pixel tubes. And we just had this set to, I think a 3200 Kelvin because we motivated it just off of like, you know, some, some of those under countertop lights, those kind of things. So we just wanted a little bit other like pops of color coming up from in there. And you can see that overhead chandelier that's over like, I think the kitchen table. We just turned on those practical lights as well because they're little like orange bulb lights and I think they just added a nice touch to the whole scene. So there were a handful of lights, but it was pretty simple breaking down the reason why. We wanted to light a key light, just make soft light, but we also wanted to motivate some sunlight coming in, which is why we had that 1200 slash of light and the 600 slash of light. And then we just used the traditional kind of three light foundation rim light as well, just to bring up a little bit of exposure on her shadow side. So it wasn't all that crazy. Um, just kind of a handful of lights because when you shoot in a bigger scene, you're gonna have more space to light essentially. Is the sun coming in? Oh, the sun's peeking in right there. Look at that, it's like a cute little halo. I kind of like that. So I think that one thing I want to talk about with this is that we are thinking really on the fly and sometimes you don't need to overcomplicate things. And that's why I, I go to this setup a lot, actually this lighting setup, because it gives our talent a very nice soft light, but it gives texture and it keeps the scene from just kind of being a flat soft light by adding in these hard rays of light. So when they came to me and said, can we get this shot in like 10 minutes? I was like, we can do it in five because I knew where everything needed to be. And then once you get everything in place, you just kind of work with the DP and dial in exactly the positioning of where these lights need to be. And it kind of works great. It's a really good method. So feel free to adopt this lighting setup on any of your kind of sunsetty, nice, bright, happy feeling shoots because it, it works and it feels good. It's definitely not unique to me. I probably stole it from a million different people but it's just because it works and it looks good and it's a great structure to work off of and then massage and make your own. But that's all. I hope you guys enjoy your day. Wow, that sun is just like really there right now. I did not scout that. I'm lighting the scene for with these foam boards that were in. I think they work. They, yeah, it's doing a lot actually. You take that, you bring that in there. I was just like 10 minutes ago, I was searching through the garage because I was like, whoa, I want to shoot here, but it's really dark. What do we have? And we had these white little insulation things that you get from Lowe's. So if you're still sticking around for these little outtakes, use those. See ya.